Hello everyone. Back again with film recaps. In this video, I'm going to recap one of the thriller films from 2021, titled C for Me. Before we get to the storyline, I'd like to wish everyone a happy and great day. Without further ado, let's get straight to the storyline. The movie begins with a young former downhill ski champion, Sophie Scott, living a blind life with her mother after being diagnosed with a disease years ago. Her Olympic dreams are dashed when she is diagnosed with retinitis pigmentosa, a degenerative eye disease causing blindness. Since giving up her skiing dream, Sophie has turned to cat sitting for wealthy clients to make money. Following a recent cat caring appointment, she is now sneaking out of the house without telling her mother. And because of her blindness, she gets frustrated and insists on handling all of her work without assistance from anyone. When Sophie is about to leave the house, her mother stops her, and demands the purpose of going alone outside. Sophie makes excuses about going to cat sit, but after checking her account, her mother asks about a large amount of money she has in there. The mother accuses her of having a sugar daddy, but she quickly tells her mother that the money comes from the tips she gets from cat sitting for wealthy parents. With her mother satisfied, Sophie leaves the house to hail a cab, and head to her next cat sitting job. After traveling for a few miles, Sophie reaches a beautiful mansion owned by a wealthy woman named Deborah. The house is situated far from the hustle and bustle of New York City, near a serene forest. Deborah greets Sophie and introduces her to the house security alarm, and her beloved cat. Deborah is going on vacation to celebrate her recent divorce, and Sophie is the only one who responded to her cat sitting job posting in a short period of time. As soon as Deborah leaves the house, Sophie quickly puts a tracking device on the cat's neck, and video calls her friend, Cam, for a proper view of the house. As Sophie sees the house through Cam's eyes, she marvels at every detail that he reveals to her, from the intricate decorations, to the breathtaking natural beauty that surrounds the property. After exploring the main floor, Sophie follows Cam to the basement, where she discovers three rooms. One of the rooms holds a delightful surprise for Sophie, a wine store stocked with bottles of old, rare wines from various brands. Sophie can't resist the temptation and chooses a bottle to steal, but Cam intervenes, refusing to allow her to continue with her thieving ways. Here it reveals to us that the money Sophie's mother inquired about didn't come from cat sitting tips, but was earned by selling the expensive wine she stole from the houses of rich people where she cat sat with Cam's help. Sophie settles into the guest room to check her messages. She hears her mother's repeated recommendations to use the See For Me app, which connects visually impaired people with sighted instructors. As she proceeds to step outside the house for a smoke, Deborah calls her, wanting her to activate the security system. Sophie manages to reach the system by touching the window, and successfully activates it. Shortly after, by going outside the house to smoke. Sophie realizes that she has accidentally locked herself out, with no one around to help her, and she frantically calls her friend Cam for help. Unfortunately, Cam doesn't pick up, leaving Sophie with no other choice but to download her mother's recommended C for Me app. With the app installed, Sophie contacts the first available instructor, who advises her to seek help from her neighbor. Frustrated by the distance to the nearest neighbor, Sophie hangs up. She then decides to contact a new instructor, Kelly, a tactical gamer from Florida. After realizing there is no easy way to unlock the front door, Kelly suggests finding another entrance on the ground floor. Although Sophie is determined to do it by herself, Kelly guides her to another sliding door that can take her inside the house. With Kelly's instructions, Sophie manages to open the door and enter the house again, but triggers the security alarm in the process. She immediately rushes to turn off the alarm, and manages to shut it off on time. Thrilled with the success of the See For Me app and Kelly's guidance, Sophie makes sure to save Kelly's contact as a priority. As she settles into bed later that night, she tunes into the Paralympic skiing, where she's reminded of her dream to become an Olympic skier. Her friend Cam even urges her to consider the Paralympics with him, where he will act as her seeing guide, but Sophie remains uncertain, still haunted by her shattered aspirations that overthrew the dream she lived for. When she finally falls asleep, we learn that someone has been keeping an eye on the mansion. An intruder slips into the mansion undetected, 
disabling the security system to let his accomplice in. With the coast seemingly clear, the robbers bring out their heavy drills, and shining lights to make their way toward Deborah's prized possessions. Just as they approach an expensive painting and put it away, it exhibits a clear wall behind which, in reality, hides a secret locker there. But before they can seize their treasure, Sophie stirs from her slumber, jolted awake by the commotion. She steps out of her bedroom to investigate and starts looking for the cat. The girl pulls out the tracking device, which emits a tiny beep when she taps the button on the app. Meanwhile, the robbers are trying to be as quiet as possible when they suddenly hear a faint beeping sound, and panic sets in. As Sophie follows the sound, she has no idea that the robber is doing the same. In the search, Sophie and the robber are about to face each other, but Sophie's luck saves her by keeping her away from the site where the robber goes. In the meantime, the other robber puts a device on the wall, and opens it only to unveil a secret locker worth $7 million. The sound of the door opening draws Sophie's attention, making her uneasy. After surveying the house, the first robber named Ernie, rushes to the second robber, Dave, telling him that he suspects the presence of someone in the house. Sophie overhears them, and Ernie instructs Dave to keep drilling the locker, while he searches for the person who might still be inside the mansion. In hurry and horror, Sophie turns around only to break a vase. This lures Ernie to her location, but she manages to run away before he arrives there. The breakage of the vase confirms the presence of another person in the house, resulting in Ernie speeding up his search before the person calls the cops. By finding the safe spot, Sophie immediately informs cops of the intruders, but as the police are going to take a long time because of the house's location, Sophie opens C for me out of horror, and approaches Kelly again for assistance. Kelly immediately instructs Sophie to remain where she is, while at the same time, Ernie sees Sophie's belongings in the guest room. Sophie who is now in a panic, denies listening to Kelly, and walks randomly into the house to find the way out. Kelly gets tired of telling Sophie to stay down, so she tells her where the robber is right now and helps her escape. But anxiety makes Sophie go for the front door and run away. Stay down? You can make it. No, 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 you can't go back that way. No, the other guy's there. I'm gonna go for it. Shit. Just when she is about to go near the door, Ernie informs Dave of the presence of another person in the house, and then proceeds to call his boss. After the boss instructs them to continue their job, Dave goes to drill while Ernie decides to swipe the house to find Sophie. As both intruders get distracted by their work, Sophie finds an opportunity and goes for the front door. No, 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 Sophie! Hey. Hey, Sophie. But to her bad luck, she encounters the third robber, Otis, who was outside the house all the time. He hangs up the call with Kelly, and takes Sophie to the other robbers. When they go through her phone, Ernie finds out that she has already called the cops on them. The intruders then ask their boss for instructions on how to deal with Sophie, but when Sophie says she is a blind girl, the boss dismisses her as a non-issue and tells them to spare her life. As the robbers are running out of time to drill the locker before the police arrive, Sophie comes up with a plan and offers the robbers an idea to get rid of the cops. However, in return, they have to give her a share of $7 million hidden in a safe in the wall. When robbers doubt the blind girl, she shows the wine bottle she was stealing from Deborah's house, and was going to sell elsewhere. Sophie then calls 911 a second time to cancel her initial report, but according to the operator, the police have to respond even after a false alarm is reported. Hearing this, they all get rid of the tools they used to break in, and turn off the lights before the police arrive. After a while, a police officer comes to check on the house and make sure everything is okay. Deputy Brooks strides into the house to check on Sophie, her eyes darting around the room, searching for any signs of trouble. Sophie remains tight-lipped about the intruders, despite Brooks's persistent inquiries. Just before Brooks leaves, she tries one last time to ask Sophie about the intruder, but Sophie keeps claiming that it was a false alarm. Then, all of a sudden, the operator abruptly informs the officer that Kelly has submitted a report from a blind girl, exposing Sophie's falsehood. Sophie's heart races as Deputy Brooke immediately calls for backup, determined to apprehend the robbers, right when Ernie shows up. Her plans quickly turn sour as Otis, one of the intruders, lunges at her, and a fight breaks out between the two of them. Otis tightens the rope around her neck, until the police officer's body goes limp. 
In a desperate attempt to escape, Sophie manages to grab Brooks's gun, and hides in the house to contact Kelly for help once again. With Kelly's guidance, Sophie bravely steps outside the house, as Otis follows her from behind. Kelly then orders Sophie to return to the house since it is getting cold outside. Inside the greenhouse, Ernie, with a knife in his hand, finally finds Sophie hiding there. Kelly assists Sophie in positioning herself to shoot Ernie in the right place, before she manages to shoot him dead. Meanwhile, Dave is busy drilling the safe box. Sophie then leaves the area, and a short while later, Otis discovers Ernie's dead body. Just as Otis walks into the basement, Sophie shows up and fires a bullet through his gut. However, the man still manages to get up and step closer to her, while the internet connection deteriorates, making it difficult for Sophie to aim properly. And then finally. At this point, Dave who is still working with the drilling is the only remaining robber inside the residence. At the same time, Sophie's phone battery only has 5% left, and Kelly helps her take down the third robber. She fires the first shot, but it misses, and as she prepares to fire the last shot, her phone dies, leaving her alone with Dave. After the call with Kelly abruptly ends, Sophie remains fixated on Dave, and tells him to wait until the police arrive. Realizing Sophie's blindness, Dave attempts to snatch his share of the money and make a run from the place. He ignores Sophie's repeated warnings, and continues to move toward his bag. Sophie tries to stop him, but Dave's movements trigger her instincts, forcing her to warn him for the last time. Dave surrenders by dropping to his knees, but his true intentions become apparent as he reaches for Deputy Brooks' taser. Fortunately, Sophie reacts and fires at him before he can pull the trigger. With all three intruders defeated, Sophie hears Dave's phone ringing, and she tells the boss, Rico, that the job is done. Afterward, she doesn't want to miss the chance to steal, so she goes to the locker to take some of the money for herself while she waits for the police. But little does she know that Rico is waiting outside. The boss then decides to take matters into his own hands, and make a surprise entrance, much to Sophie's horror. Here, we find out that Rico is Deborah's ex-husband, and he hired all three of the robbers to break into the safe to steal his money back from his wife. Rico also reveals that Deborah didn't know the safe or the money was in the house, and he proposes that Sophie keep quiet about it and join forces with him to split the money. However, Sophie's hesitation triggers Rico to take drastic measures. The man pulls out his gun, and begins chasing her throughout the house. As Sophie scrambles to evade Rico, she hides in the kitchen. In a last-ditch effort to get his attention away from her, she hurls a glass in a different direction. Rico falls for the trick, and Sophie bolts out of the kitchen. But the man's aim is good, he fires a shot at her, hitting her leg in the process. Despite the wound, Sophie manages to flee to the greenhouse, where she discovers Ernie's lifeless body. In a clever move, she steals his cell phone and uses his fingerprints to unlock it. She then dials Rico's number, and reveal his location when his phone starts ringing. Sophie seizes the opportunity to turn the tables on him, and quickly opens fire, seriously injuring Rico. Despite the gunshot wounds, Rico refuses to give up and launches a vicious attack on her. Sophie's heart races with fear, and in a desperate attempt to defend herself, she grabs hold of a wine bottle and swings it with all her might, striking Rico's already injured head. The girl unleashes a barrage of blows upon Rico's face, until he lies lifeless before her. After eliminating all the intruders, Sophie collapses to the ground, waiting for the police to arrive. <laughs> Following hospital treatment, she receives therapy from her loving mother. Here Sophie reveals to her mother her ambition to join the Paralympics, and return to skiing. Her mother is overjoyed and wonders how to afford the training fees, and Sophie clutches her backpack and smiles, implying that she took some of the money with her from the house. As the days pass, Sophie calls Kelly again to tell her that she started skiing again, this time with the help of her friend Cam, who serves as her guide down the slopes. The movie ends with Kelly virtually motivating Sophie in her new journey of life, while she takes a deep breath and gets ready to ski down the mountain hill to reclaim her skiing champion status once more. Okay guys, that's all the recap of C for me 2021. Thanks for watching. See you again in the next video.